Hey guys, Coach Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. Ever since we posted the new bike day video, you know the one, the one of the Focus Izalco Max Disc, we've been asked quite a few times about saddle tilt. And I thought this would make an excellent topic for this video. So today we're talking about the science of saddle tilt or saddle angle and also captures hip angle and torso angle as key variables. So today we're taking a deep dive into saddle angle aka saddle tilt. Um, to put it simply this is the angle away from the horizontal that your saddle is pointing presumably down. I mean it's highly unconventional for the front of the saddle to be pointing up up from the horizon but if you've got a bike where your saddle is pointing up let me know. In fact post me a picture I'd love to see it. So of course when we're talking about saddle angle it affects our whole position on the bike. So we're really talking about something that's heavily related to the angle of your torso on the bike which is the angle between the horizontal and the upper part of your body. And also the hip angle, which of course is the angle between your upper body and your leg or your hip flexion, as in this figure. And these are in turn strongly related to aerodynamics on the bike, which we'll come back to in a second. But first and foremost, let's address comfort. Because unless you're a racing cyclist, unless you're in a time trial, you know, comfort is probably the most important thing for you. And I can simply summarize and say if your saddle has too big a downward tilt at the front, then you might get too much pressure at the rear and you'll probably feel like you're being pushed forward, possibly even falling off the saddle at the front. But conversely, if your saddle is pointing too far upwards and doesn't even have to be upwards from horizontal, too far upwards for you, then you probably feel like there's too much pressure at the front, which can be really uncomfortable. And you might even feel like you're being pushed backwards, particularly when you're trying to put the power down on the pedals. You might feel you haven't got the grip on the saddle to push forward and maintain that, you know, maintain that forward velocity under power. So I want to introduce a rule of thumb about comfort right at the start of this video, which is whichever angle of saddle you prefer, that will be called in jargon rider self-selected angle, then that is by definition your optimum. That's the end of the story. It doesn't matter what the pros do, what I show you that other people do or what your friends do. If you found by experimentation that the saddle angle that you've got for that particular saddle is best for you and you're happy with that and you're not getting problems, that's the end of the story, guys. And generally, if you're a recreational or shall we say casual rider, someone for whom speed is not a top priority, then I'm guessing comfort is a priority. So that's fine. But I will say also that many beginners have a very flat saddle, let's say out of the box, and literally I do mean out of the box. When you unpack your bike on new bike day, often if it has the saddle attached, the manufacturers tend to put it in a very horizontal position. Indeed, if you look at any number of online cycle shops, look at the new photos of bikes being sold, 99% of saddles, 99% of photos showing saddles, actually show a level saddle or within a few percent there's level. In other words, the bike industry gives the illusion that a level saddle is best. And if you happen to post a picture to your buddies or on YouTube where your saddle deviates down slightly, you'll definitely get some comments. Hey, what is it with your saddle? Why the negative grade? And that's definitely what I got with the Focus is Alco Max video. But don't worry guys, I don't mind. That's totally cool. I'm not worried about those comments because in fact it introduces a very good point which is people don't know what is the best saddle position. They don't know if there's any science in this area. They haven't looked it up. And I'm saying Fast Fitness Tips today are going to go beyond comfort and fit and try and look at aerodynamics and position. Now the other thing I should probably acknowledge is that the actual saddle itself does affect the saddle angle or saddle tilt. In other words, if you've got a long nose saddle versus a stubby saddle, probably it's the case that the long nose is going to be uncomfortable if it's excessively horizontal or even, you know, pointing upwards for sure. And if you've got a cutout saddle versus a non-cutout saddle, probably that will help ease the pressure, you know, as opposed to the non-cutout traditional old school saddle. And similarly, some saddles, like I've had classic Seller Talis gel saddle, they tend to have a scooped middle, 
you know, rather than a completely flat middle. So the front and the back of the saddle are up slightly and the, it kind of encourages a more sitting in the saddle, rather like a horse rider, rather than a bike rider type of position. So what I'm saying is the actual saddle design does have an influence. So there definitely isn't one size that fits all here. But that to one side, we can get pretty clever, pretty technical about saddle fit. And in fact, no end of companies, pretty much every year, another company comes out with some kind of bike fit tool, some kind of pressure map, shall we say, that enables you to read off the chart of your pressure, you know, the pressure of your ischial tuberosities or your perineum on the saddle and see apparently on the screen which saddle choice is right for you. Now I'm going to put it right out there guys to you that even with an advanced pressure mapping system such as for example GeoBiomai saddle pressure mapping which puts a cover on your saddle and then you know you sit on it with your saddle underneath and it produces a really nice pressure map. What I'm saying there is that doesn't prove that that's right for you. If you have a spike you know in the forward direction it doesn't necessarily prove that the saddle is too pointy up you know it's not tilted enough it should be further down. It's suggesting that perhaps but it depends on your fundamental riding position. If you check out this Bontrager chart it shows you that leisure cyclists, of course, they tend to sit more upright, sometimes even vertical. And that's been tested by us literally putting scales under the front and the rear tires in order to measure the front rear balance on our tire pressure calculator. So we know that these positions make a big difference on the bike. And the more aggressive you are, the more, let's say, the more speed orientated you are, then generally the more rotated you are about the hips, you know, the, the, the tighter your torso angle and the more aerodynamic, obviously, your position. But that basically means that you're riding over the front of the saddle, as in this diagram. So really what we have to do is to say within your rider type, which is the right saddle for you. So I tend to ride in pretty aerodynamic position. You know, I'm not saying I'm the best, but I tend to ride as in this chart in, let's say, posture one or posture two. So I tend to look for saddles which have a slightly stubby nose, but not ultra stubby nose, not a time trial saddle. I'm talking about on my road bike, but they have some padding, quite a degree of padding at the front on the nose of the saddle. But if I was a rider that rode, let's say, posture three, four, I might look for a totally different saddle design. And there's no reason to say that the saddle design would be the same. I'd probably choose a totally different saddle. OK, so we're talking a lot there about saddle comfort, and that's quite right, because that's the majority of the story for most riders. But here I'm coming on to what I think is the interesting bit, which is what about saddle angle for keen riders who are in time trials, who are look riding solo against a clock or just basically interested in speed? What is the link there? Well, clearly saddle angle or downward saddle tilt is not exactly the same as torso angle. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship if only life was that simple. But definitely if you want to go more aero, you want to basically present a smaller frontal area as well as, of course, wearing, for example, increasingly aerodynamic clothes, which are, you know, getting to be a hot thing in cycling now, i.e. regular cycling road clothes that really mimics the effect of skin suits from the last few years. And there's been a huge amount of work by individual riders, by teams, by companies selling products in the wind tunnel or computational fluid dynamics, looking at the optimum position. And one of the recent series is by Blocken, University of Eindhoven. And you can see from this aerodynamic comparison which position is most aerodynamic. You know, the Pantani position, the Sagan position, the Froome position. Well, the point is to get into these aerodynamic positions, you're presenting a very low, very small frontal area. You're tightening up on your torso angle. And it pretty much goes without saying, if you're tightening up on your torso angle, you're bent over at the hips. And generally, therefore, you need to tilt the, the saddle downwards at least a small amount to relieve the pressure on your perineum. And this has been studied using those pressure mapping fitting devices, but this time in the lab where they looked at this, you know, in professional riders and they found that the old regulations from the UCI where they would say, well, you had to maintain less than a 2.5% downward degree tilt, plus or minus 0.5%, so pretty strict there, were causing the pro riders unnecessary discomfort and distress. Yeah, seriously. In fact, since that regulation was relaxed on the 1st of Jan 2016, it went, by the way, to a nine degree downward tilt is allowed in UCI events. And that's plus or minus one degree. So it's actually up to 
10 degrees downward till. That's eased a lot of problems in the Pro Peloton. In fact, GCN did some kind of feature on this February 2017 where they asked pro riders about their position. So Johan van Ziel said there that he and many others prefer that downward tilt on the saddle so you can get into a more aggressive position. So I want to just emphasize, I'm not saying you have to go into ultra aero position or ride like a pro rider. Obviously, I know that most riders will want to ride for comfort, first of all. In fact, for those not subject to any UCI rule, there is some data collected. There are data out there on freely chosen position by cyclists. And it's quite interesting. If you allow riders to choose a freely chosen seat tube angle, they'll tend to choose a seat tube angle of around 78 degrees. And if you ask mainly recreational riders to go into a freely chosen torso angle, that tends to be between 20 and 22 degrees with a hip angle of 68 to 70 degrees. So now what I want to do is to see if we can put some numbers on the speculation I've kind of given you so far. Like how does it affect your output, your efficiency, your power, that kind of thing? Because adding some downward tilt clearly tightens up on your torso angle. It clearly reduces your frontal area for most people or let's say relative to yourself and it also prevents slipping backwards on the saddle so you can probably put you know a little bit more power down as we've discussed but there is a penalty don't forget there is a penalty it's not just free speed with no penalty the penalty is it closes the hip angle somewhat so you're riding if you want to put it in a nutshell more like you know a time trial position because obviously in the time trial or triathlon position, you're bent over, over the aero bars. And you've got to get used to, you've got to train for that narrow or closed hip angle. And you might not be used to that. So if you look at this stick figure, it would explain it a little bit more. If you tie up on that torso angle, you will have a narrower hip angle. Especially actually if you increase the seat tube angle. So as a rule of thumb then, the hip angle is a product of the seat tube angle and the torso angle but actually it's not quite as simple as that if you really want to go into it mathematically you can work out with a simple formula the relationship more exactly between hip angle seat tube angle and torso angle and the reason i'm mentioning this here is because this will enable us then tease out the relationship between let's say these angles and you know key variables and for once we don't have to do it because there's a brilliant thesis by nathan Klippel. it's online you can download it for free and the title is the effects of hip angle manipulation on submaximal oxygen consumption in collegiate cyclists so he looked at seat tube angle and also torso angle so although i'm not talking directly about saddle tilt here I am implying that by putting the saddle down somewhat, you'll be able to get a steeper torso angle, albeit at the cost of a tighter hip angle. And what I want to do is tease that out in terms of the pros and the cons of that. So the first thing he did is to look at the relationship between torso angle and power. And that's very interesting because you get a nice graph like this, which shows you there's probably an optimum torso angle of around 20, 25 degrees or so. And very tight angles, very narrow angles are hard to produce that power. An effect that everyone will know when they're trying to cycle in that acute extreme time trial position. Especially if somebody else like your bike fitter tells you to go even steeper or your coach tells you to go in a more extreme position and you can't manage it. He didn't just look at that, he also looked at this model CDA by torso position. And this one's more predictable. The tighter, the narrower, the, the lower your torso, then the more aerodynamic you are. And it really starts to pick up under five degrees if you can maintain that. And then guys, we can combine the two together, put them into a calculator and boom, we've got the result for torso angle against speed. And we get this beautiful plot of the optimum angle which of course does favor speed if you can get into very tight positions this doesn't really take into account comfort other than what is robbing you of the power i.e a tight torso angle reducing your power somewhat but because the aerodynamics is so powerful the position will win out over that loss of power for most people down to really quite surprising positions all right guys i realize it's probably getting a little bit complex for most people but what i've been able to do now is to add this data back into our old stem aero calculator you know our stem slam the stem drop calculator that's been out quite a while now over a thousand people have looked at that on google sheets 
So what I've done here, and it's entirely optional, is to add in change of hip stroke torso stroke saddle angle to the calculator. So you basically just put in the distance from saddle to bars and also the degree to which you change your torso angle, you know, one degree, two degree more rotated. And that will work out the additional drop, the additional drop that you've gained. And it will add it optionally to the, the stem gains, i.e. slamming your stem. And it will give you your approximate gain in watts, gain in seconds and gain in time, which hopefully will be useful. So that's now built in to the slam your stem aero calculator. And by the way, you don't have to alter your stem to do the calculation. So you can keep your stem the same and just put, I altered my torso angle, let's say one degree. What's the effect? The calculator will tell you that. So here's my take home message, guys. Don't assume your bike saddle angle is correct out of the box. Think about it, change your saddle angle, play around with it a little bit, find the most comfortable saddle angle for you. Two, definitely don't assume somebody else's saddle angle is definitely right or definitely wrong. Ass assuming they've looked into it or at least considered it, then their saddle angle's right for them if they're comfortable and not complaining. Three, saddle angle works with saddle choice and also, of course, with the seat tube angle. I haven't mentioned that much today, but the seat tube angle does factor into this. Four, if you are interested in speed, then the UCI limit's been removed for a few years now and you can put a downward angle of up to 10 degrees, but even a two, three, four, five degree tilt will probably work. In fact, if you look at this chart here, which I plugged into our calculator ahead of time with a small, medium or large size frame, if you can gain a body position rotation or a torso angle rotation of an additional one degree, it will probably save you about three watts. And if you can rotate, let's say five degrees of torso angle, additional five degrees in, let's say, a large frame, then it could quite easily save you 21 watts at 40 kph, which isn't a bad saving, guys. It actually works out about 76 seconds over 40 kilometer TT. Boom, there we go, guys. Saddle angle, tilt angle, hip angle, torso angle. That's enough angles for today, don't you think? Seriously, until next time, guys, have a great ride. Check us out on Patreon if you can. If not, just give us a like or share. It's appreciated. Until next time, guys, have a great ride.